Good evening and welcome to Ideas at Work and Beyond. Um, I have the pleasure of hosting the show again tonight. My name is Marty Heiser. And uh, this evening we're going to be looking at this very uh, incredible book, Bible Rhymes Creation. And on the phone with me I have Ken McCardle, who's the author of this book, um, along, I think we have a, a photograph. By the way, Ken, is that young lady in the photograph, is that the artist uh, that drew the um, pictures in the book? Yes, sir. I don't know if we can get a, a close-up of that, but she's a very attractive young lady. Well, Ken, uh, we appreciate very much you coming on the show tonight. Um, I had a chance to read through the books and, and almost more importantly, but the endorsements of the book. Uh, Pastor Robert Rocamo of Trinity Community Church, Dustin Larson of Children Ministry Pastor, Kevin, Kevin McCarthy. I mean, it just goes on and on and it almost makes you blush um, at uh, the endorsements you've been getting from this book. Has, has it been selling well? What's the reaction been? Well, we've had, uh, we've been accepted into some of the greater bookstore chains in the country. Yeah, I saw that. You have Amazon, Borders, that, those are, that's pretty impressive company. We, we've been put up with uh, some of the, with some of our children's favorites alongside of the Cinderella's and the Little Red Riding Hoods around. And uh, it has, the acceptance we've received from around the world has, has been a little overwhelming for us and it's, uh, it's been a great, great experience so far. Well, Ken, this is great. Listen, before we get to the book and get started, because I want to ask you some questions about that, tell me a little bit about yourself. First of all, how do you know Ivan? Ivan is a, a dear family friend. He, he went to school with my brother years ago, and I was able to make his acquaintance, and over the years we've gotten to know each other. Okay. <clears throat> and he's, uh, he's turned into a good family friend of ours. Okay, well, great. Well, I, I think uh, it was through Ivan's connection that we're, you're on the show tonight and we're talking about this book. I was reading a little bit through your bio, Tell me a little bit about your time managing a cattle ranch in Montana. What happened there? Well, I was offered the opportunity. I had never dreamed of being a cowboy. Yeah, you grew up in Michigan, right? I, I grew up in the Detroit area. Okay. Three miles north of Detroit. Three miles north all, of Detroit. All... That's kind of M&M, eight-mile territory. Last time I saw that, there weren't too many cows around there. Not, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot of green, mostly concrete around the Detroit area. Okay. But I was able to, I got this opportunity to go out to Montana, and we were transitioning a, uh, well, the challenge was put to me to take a conventional ranch and transition it into one that can produce organically raised uh, black Angus. Okay. A along with that, it, to me, seeing how these animals get treated, I pushed to have, uh, we transitioned everything into where we were ra raising animals humanely. We had uh, doctors come out and certify the operation that said we're taking care of the animals as best as humanly possible uh, okay. while they're spending their time here on Earth. Okay, all right, well, very interesting. Now tell me, uh, uh, you come from a family, there were uh, five children, you're the youngest of five children in your family? That's correct. Okay, was there any uh, fights over who got the last pork chop at your dinner table, and, and did that make you a tougher person? <laughs> well, they say the little, they say the youngest are always spoiled, and I, I tend to get disagree. I think the youngest get picked on the most, probably. Well, yeah, I have a theory. I have three kids of my own, and I think the first one you're most protective of, and, and as the, the second and third, and I guess in your case the fifth come along, uh, you go ahead and ride your bicycle without a helmet, play in, ta in traffic, do whatever you want. Pa your parents are pretty much uh, tired out for raising kids, I think. Yeah, by the, by the time the fifth child came along, my brothers and sisters, they, were, uh, they spent a lot of their time parenting me. <laughs> okay, that, that might be good or bad. Okay, why did you start Bible Rhymes? Uh, as they say, every, everyone's got a story. Tell us yours. How did a guy growing up, friends with Eminem, hanging out on eight miles in Detroit, Michigan, going out to Montana, being humane to cows, uh, end up writing a, a Christian children's book? Well, the, the Lord always works in his miraculous ways. Okay. And I guess it was growing up in the area. I, I grew up and I wrestled for the Detroit Boys and Girls Club down in the Seven Mile area. You wrestled for them? Yeah, I was, okay. a, I was a state champion wrestler when I was a boy. Oh, excellent. Okay. 
and uh, with the the area, the environment down there was all rap music and stuff like this. All right. The the parents cringe at, and I, I guess that kind of played into over the, over the years having to grow up listening to that type of music. The rhyming scheme, I think, got into my brain somehow. So there was an Eminem influence in all this. Uh, well, I, I, this was before Eminem's time, but okay. <laughs> there, there was a there was influence on there. I would I would have to say just uh, the the rhymes kept coming, and I have to keep listening while I'm at practice, and and so somewhere they got stuck into my head. Okay, okay. I, I guess that was against my parents' wishes, but I think uh, the Lord, who's my true father. I think that was part of his whole game plan. Okay, so I mean, growing up hip hop wise, what were your influences? Cypress Hill, uh, um, Cool in the Gang. Uh, Is that, no, I don't know if I want to go uh, as far as how influenced I got by these different groups or anything. I think it was more the. Uh, yeah, I can't pick any particular one that would have had it, played a great role in in what I'm doing, especially what I'm doing now has, uh, I would think, very little, if anything, to do with what those guys were doing. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. All right, so you grew up in uh, kind of a tough area. You, you rustled, and uh, then you keep mentioning the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. What the heck are you talking about, the Lord this, the Lord that? It sounds a little foreign to me. The, the good Lord, your God, my God, uh, he, he plays a major role in my life. I, I grew up, my parents had me going to a church school when I was a, a young boy and had me going to Thursday night youth groups and church every Sunday or I was in big trouble. Okay. And uh, so the Lord and the Bible have always been a part of my life. Okay. That was just stuck in me. Was there a point where you made it more of a personal relationship with Christ and not just a religion? Or uh, is this something you sort of taken on as kind of uh, adhering to the rules and regulations of an established church? Tell us about that. Well, I was going, I guess, because of my having to go to church so much as a, as a youth uh, that when I turned an adult, a little bit i wanted my space and i wanted to make my own my adult decision of whether the the lord is who i want guiding my life or is this someone that my parents threw at me and i had to accept it because of my parents ah. and so i'd say right around when i was 21 i made uh through a girl i was dating and see the lord works in his miraculous ways again he put yeah. a girl into my life that unless i went to church with her she wasn't going to be dating me uh-huh I took her up on that, and I started going to church with her, and uh, it really it filled me up as an adult. As this is this is the way that I want to live my life. I want to I want to influence others to be able to to feel this the joy that I get from my relationship with God. Wow! Yeah. And uh, so over the years. I didn't jump in. I didn't go out and start prophesizing or preaching to people. Uh -huh. But but it was instilled in my heart deeply. And then it came out, I guess, when I was in Montana. And I started writing. I was doing a, quite a bit of poetry out there. There's, there's not quite so many activities to be doing in Montana. So <laughs> I got into a little poetry writing, and it took its spiritual turn. Wow. And then... Uh, Eventually, I was on a, a trip back from Montana over a Christmas, and it was Christmas 05, um, and I was in a bit of a grumpy mood one day, and I picked up the Bible, because that's what, where I turn when I need my strength and guidance or a little pick-me-ups. So I started reading the Bible, and then uh, well, the grumpy mood went away, and I felt surrounded that Every time I pick up the Bible, it feels like the Lord's rushing to my side and uh, felt surrounded by a bunch of good spirits, and it just left me smiling for a little bit. Okay. And I couldn't get back into reading that day. If something was telling me, which for me means the Lord was telling me, but something was telling me to start writing these biblical rhymes. Okay. Um, for me, the language in the Bible, well, I'm not so confused by it, but... The, the language can be confusing to a lot of people and a lot of children. They just they can't comprehend the words, the old language in the Bible. Right. Understand the stories and they get lost. So something was telling me I need to make these stories fun and comprehensible for children. Right. And, and thus started the Bible rhymes. 
Okay. And, and that, I, so that was uh, about 2005? Uh, the beginning, the end of 2005, very beginning of 2006. Okay. And, uh, and this is your first publication of, uh, of a book? Bible Rhymes Creation is the first, and within uh, the beginning of November, we'll have our next two books ready, and that's Bible Rhymes Noah and the Ark and Bible Rhymes Christmas Story. Excellent, because what you've done, it's not a hard read, uh, Ken. A, a guy could sit down and in one evening plow through this book, but, but what you've done, I don't know if they can uh, get this on TV, uh, but uh, basically you talk about the Genesis account of creation, starting with the creation, and, and he's, in the beginning they said, whispers grace, God turned on his light, dark went to hiding, the world turning bright. The dark he called night, the light he called day, for joyful young children to go out and play. And then it goes through uh, the creation of uh, nature, then the creation, like changing its shoes, the skies turn to gray, painting a scene of rain on the way. The skies like a play, each act is a hue, and evening and morning were day number two. And going through the weather, and then it creates a... Uh, um, the, the seas and, and then time and then it goes on and talks about I, I like this picture especially I don't know if we can get a shot of that but the uh, jumping whale and there's an investment banking firm that advertises a lot on golf uh, um, tournaments and they have a jumping whale but it goes through the Genesis account and then uh, uh, the, this is one I like uh, not stopping at that talking about day seven more was at hand. Next God created a woman and a man. His plan came together in every which way. His grin, almost glaring, beamed like a ray. Where do you come up with these rhymes? Well, first I'll have to stop you before uh, your, your viewers think that I, I mixed up a little bit. It was day number six that he made the woman and man. Oh, you're absolutely correct. Day number seven, he rested. You're absolutely right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what. The, here, the on rhymes, day number seven, them, here, I'll read it. Th throughout I, the books, the Noah and the Ark, the Christmas story, the real, they turn into real fun stories. Some of these rhymes, I would have to give all the credit to God for putting, putting the words, some of these lines, the way he did. Because it seems, uh, with my lack of experience of writing, it seems like he, he gave us a pretty good, uh, a pretty good rhyme. And so I, I, I'm just thankful for the, the people that I had helping me out with my editing process. And, and I thank the good Lord for putting all the words into my brain. Huh. Okay, on day, on day number seven, God stood in awe, feeling so happy with all that he saw. Creation still raw, God took a rest. This day was the Sabbath, he said it was blessed. With birds in their nests, puppies and apes, thousand foot mountains and vineyards of grapes, God shaped our world and made it so nice. He didn't have help or any advice. I mean, I can just see. I mean, my kids are all grown now, but I can just see And when they wanted to read a book, read a book, they would want to have a book like this. They'd want to jump up on your lap and go through, and you're giving them good biblical content at a very young age. Um, I don't know. I'm very impressed with this. I see there's a, like uh, I opened with, there's a long list of established ministries and churches that just give glowing responses uh, to what people have had with this kind of books. And it seems like uh, you've really caught on to something and there's a bright future for this. And yeah, we've actually even had a this pastor in Australia that I've come across, or she came across us, uh -huh. and uh, we have a Bible Rhymes MySpace page. And okay. so we're able to link up with readers all over the world. And uh, a pastor through, found me through that and ordered our book, and uh, she read it to her congregation for a children's service. Huh. And now nice. that she got such good acceptance there that she's, she's promised to include our future books in her services as well. Oh, that's great. And that's in Australia. That's correct. So yep. you're, you're, you're an internationally published uh, author. That's good. Um, if people want to learn more about this, where should they go as far as a website? BibleRhymes.com 
gives you some of my free poetry, aside from the Bible rhymes. This gives uh, more adults uh, some Christian poetry to look at. But for the books, we give away our electronic version. We're giving away um, the Bible rhymes creation electronically right now, and we plan to do that for each book in the series. Uh, we give a free version people can download all over the world. People have been able to do that. And that's what's really helped spread the spread the word around. <laughs> but uh, we give samples away. You can download our book. It's got information about myself and the author and and uh, pretty much everything you'd want to know about Bible Rhymes you can find there. Or well, there's a link on BibleRhymes.com to my MySpace page, and then you can hear what I have to say day to day to the different readers and the different uh, the blogs I put out there. Huh, great, BibleRhymes.com. Now there are a couple of verses in the Bible. You'd probably be able to quote them uh, uh, on chapter and verse, but one is where Jesus is speaking. He says, Suffer not the little children to come unto me because of such is the kingdom of heaven. Um, do you think that, well, maybe this is a softball question, but is there some significance in really reaching out to young children in their, in their formative years with some of these important Bible lessons and get them ingrained into them uh, from early youth? Well, I think that's, I think that's our obligation as if we're going to call ourselves Christians as parents or you know, people, I don't have my own children, but as, as the adults in our community, you know, we're obligated to give the children this, uh, to pass on the love that we feel that we've gotten through the Bible or through Jesus Christ's teachings. Um, I think we're required to pass that along to the children. I mean, we're up against it. We've got strong competition with all the, the SpongeBob SquarePants or <laughs> that that they, they're throwing at the children. <laughs> we've got to turn uh, with these stories and coming out with the whole series. We need to turn the Bible into something that the children are, would rather pick up, these Bible rhymes or something of that nature, would rather pick those up than the SpongeBob. We huh. need to, with all respect to the Lord, with all respect to the to the Bible characters, the Noah and the Ark, our story with Noah and the Ark, we've got a little big belly on Noah, and we add some fun things into the stories. And it's, with us, we're keeping all of the respect but we're trying to make the, the stories appealing to children, something that they're going to want to every night ask mom and dad, hey, can we read, can we read the Bible Rhymes book? Huh. I, I think we need to do that for the kids so they can have the same truths to lean on that we do. You know, I, I hear some people sometimes say, well, you know, I'm not going to indoctrinate my children into one religion or anything like that. I'm just going to let them you know, grow up, and, and when they get to be uh, older, 18, 19, 20 years old, I'll let them make their own decisions as far as, you know, what their view of God is. What would your reaction be to someone like that? Well, there's so much influence in the other direction as opposed to God. There's those other influences in our lives that would take us in a negative direction. <laughs> and if you're going to wait until your child's an adult to bring good things into his life, then for all of his formative years, he's been... He's been awash in these not-so-promising things. Hmm. And so if, we, if you don't step up, if you don't offer the good things while they're used, when they're little kids, they're full of innocence. They're pure. And as many years as we let them get away from that, I mean, it's, it's going to be that much harder to get them back where they need to be. They, you know, they've got all these bad influences for 15 years, and then finally we're going to say, oh, but this is how life should be or life could be. You know, it, it's interesting. This book and, and, and certainly the content of it isn't a weighty theological tome. It's a children's book. It's geared for children. It's very colorful. It has wonderful characters. But really, the beginning of this book, the beginning of Genesis, the beginning of the Bible, where it says, in the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth. God created. Um, I had a philosophical discussion with someone once, and he, he said, he, he called it the watchmaker theory, that if you're walking down a beach and you come upon a watch, and you look at the watch and you see how there's balance and there's order, and you open up the back and you see all these intricate uh, details that all work together perfectly. 
it is not irrational to conclude that there must have been a watchmaker. And he, he extrapolated that to the existence of God. He says, you know, as you look at nature, as you look at the sun that comes up every day, as you look at how trees grow, or as you look into, and, and I guess uh, you don't have any children yet, but someday, Ken, someday, if you look into the eyes of your children and you see the perfection and you see how it all works together beautifully and how complicated and, and uh, complex that is and yet it comes together, it's rational to conclude that there was a watchmaker, that there was a creator that put this all together. Now that's called the argument from design for the existence of God and it really at some level it's so innocent that it can be covered in a children's book, but at another level, it is really one of the most profound statements that you can make philosophically, and it's the fork in the road. Either we're a, we're a, we're a 42 jointed electrochemical organism that's, a, that's an accident of a godless cosmos, or there was a creator that had a design that produced us. I know I'm getting a little philosophical here, but I think that's what, what your book gets at. Well, I went to, when I was going to the university, I graduated with a finance degree. What school did you go to? Oakland University. What school? It's called Oakland University. Oakland. Is that in California, or that's just called that? Oakland County is, uh, it's uh, one of the, it's where the big three, we've got Automation Alley and stuff like this in, in Oakland County, Michigan. Okay, fine. And so over here we've got the Oakland University, and that's where that's where I went, got my finance degree. Okay. And in in getting the finance degree, I had to of course take statistics. Right. And everything in statistics, our conversations alone, this conversation, if we weren't, if we didn't have souls driving this conversation, I don't understand. Statistically, it seems impossible for this uh, for a bunch of electrons to be having this conversation, <laughs> and then somehow they're going to put it. These accidental electrons are going to put us on TV and things of this nature. It just statistically seems impossible to me to for us to be an accident. Yeah, I actually heard an analogy once to have one DNA molecule, you know, you've seen the, the, them in uh, bio, biology books, to have one DNA molecule happen by accident, just sort of come together as a result of some primordial soup that was zapped by a, by a lightning bolt or something like that. This is the, you know, the, the explanation for where we came from, these complex organisms. The analogy I heard, it would be like taking one of those old-fashioned typewriters, you know, before uh, um, keyboards and, and uh, Word and documents and computers and so forth, but one of those old-fashioned typewriters, taking all the bits and pieces and separating them out into thousands and thousands and thousands of different pieces, putting all the pieces into a industrial-strength dryer, turn on that dryer and let it spin around and around and around for billions and billions and billions of years and then open up that dryer and pull out a perfectly working typewriter. Um, that, I don't know what your statistics class says, but that's what it would take to make just one DNA molecule if there wasn't a designer, someone that put this all together. Well, that makes perfect sense to me. And even, even with the people that lean towards the science, if you, if you do a little research, I, I believe it's Albert Einstein, and the list goes on of uh, scientists that are well-renowned that all think no matter what science, no matter how much you study, it's all leading to that there is a higher power. Something created us. Wow. Well, anyways, we've certainly uh, gone full circle around, but let me, let me uh, hold up this book again. Again, it's Bible Rhymes Creations. And uh, they're putting on uh, your website, BibleRhymes.com, and that's where they can go to get more information. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for calling in. Uh, this has been uh, uh, really interesting. I'm going to keep your book, and uh, I'm probably going to give it away as a present uh, to one of my uh, little nephews who's uh, at the perfect age for this. But I really appreciate you calling in, and I really appreciate you telling us about this book, your company, and I wish you the best of success. Well, I thank you so much for your time, Marty, and hopefully as our, as our book series continues, I'll be able to come out and do something in person with you. Love to have you come out. Thanks a lot, and I appreciate very much the call. 
Thank you, too. All right. All right. You, Take care. Well, there you have it, boys and girls. Bible Rhymes Creation. Uh, you can get this on Amazon.com, Borders.com. Um, I don't know. It's a cool book. I like this guy. Uh, I like his picture. Um, I like the, uh, the late young lady artist that's with him, and I think it's great. We're going to take a break here. We're going to go from the sublime, the philosophical, the theological, right down into local Danbury politics. So stay tuned. And while you're waiting, remember this phone number. You might want to write it down. 792-4101. That number again, 792 792- 4101 because we're going to have a candidate for mayor coming on. She's going to want to know your uh, your uh, thoughts on illegal immigration, about the traffic problem, about overdevelopment, about Mark Bowden and where we're going in this town. So stay tuned and please call in 792-4101.